So strong bases, again, there's a, a finite list of strong bases that you should know. Um, two categories for our strong bases, group one hydroxide. So group one, meaning that first column in the periodic table, um, starting with lithium, then sodium, then working our way all the way down to francium. So look at a periodic table if you don't know what I mean. All of those elements paired with hydroxide are strong bases. Um, and their names are super straightforward. Lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, francium hydroxide, everything in between sodium and francium also. So those are some strong bases. And then there are these three others, calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, barium hydroxide. Um, the reason I split them up into two categories, you'll like these ones better. Why? If we were to dissociate these, Li plus and OH minus, you'll see that everything in there is still a one-to-one -one ratio, like the strong acids. These three, calcium, strontium, and barium hydroxide, they're all in the second column, so they all have a plus two charge, which means when they pair with hydroxide, we get this subscript. And let's take barium hydroxide, for instance. If I dissociate it, I get barium, I get hydroxide. Now we need a two coefficient to balance. So when we have these three, when we have the ones that have a two in them, you'll have to be a little more careful with those ratios. They're not one to one. Um, for instance, let me do an example problem here. The other, sorry, the other thing that's tricky is that when they, when they dissociate, you'll see that we get hydroxide, not hydrogen. And I'll still probably be asking you for pH. So there's going to always be this extra step with bases of the numbers that are about the base, at some point are going to have to be converted over to that H side of things. Um, so for example, let's say I had two grams of barium hydroxide in 10 liters, and I want you to find the pH. Um, similar steps as what we did before, same problem solving process, but make sure you're labeling everything really well. Um, from grams to moles, 2 equals moles times molecular weight of barium hydroxide. So barium is 137 plus the two oxygens plus the two hydrogens. We get a molecular weight of 171. So what I just found are my moles of barium hydroxide, which is 0.0117. I can find my molarity of barium hydroxide, brackets mean molarity, by taking my moles divided by my 10 liters. That's my barium hydroxide concentration. It is not equal to my hydrogen concentration because hydrogen's not even in here. And it's not equal to my hydroxide because this has a one and that has a two. So in order to get to my concentration of hydroxide, which at least hydroxide is in the formula somewhere, barium hydroxide is not, I'm going to multiply by what I want, which is the hydroxide, over what I have, which is the barium, and I get 0 0.0023 as my hydroxide concentration. From here, make sure you're using the formulas correctly. If I just negative log this number, I'm gonna make sure I don't get cut off, so I'm gonna go over here. If I just negative log 0 0.0023, really I'm negative logging my OH. And so what this is gonna find me is my POH, not my pH. Um, that's still the step I like to do next. Again, you can go any different way you want with the formulas, but since what I'm negative logging is my OH, what I'm going to get out is my pOH, 2.63. I don't want pOH, I want pH. So then I like to use the formula pH plus pOH equals 14. Um, essentially, I'm doing 14 minus that 2.63. And I find the pH to be 11.37. Now. Barium, we should be able to check that our answer makes sense and know that this answer, the 2.63, wasn't our final answer um, because barium hydroxide is a base. Bases should have a pH above 7. 
this number is not above seven. It must not be my pH. I must, I must not be done with the question. Oh yeah, it's my pOH because I plugged in my OH. Um, so the only thing different with bases, be careful of those two to one ratios. Um, and make sure, you know, at some point you have to turn from OH into H. Go for it. 